Welcome to another North Star Nerd production. Today we look at the Nokia N800, a geek's toy. Something you might think only a nerd could love, but I think after you see this screencast, you'll think it's good for almost anyone. First we'll look at the side view. Now notice it's got a handle that folds out. What this means is you don't actually have to hold it all the time. And it comes in a pretty nice compact package, but still practical for viewing. For my setup, I bought a Bluetooth keyboard as well, which communicates directly with my Nokia. And you can see the screen is 4.1 inches. Now if you've seen an Apple iPod, this screen is just a touch bigger than the iPod screen. And the resolution's good too. Here we have a screenshot of the Nokia desktop. This is what you see when you first fire up the computer. Now in the upper right hand corner, we have some small icons, Bluetooth, audio, display, your Wi-Fi connectivity, and battery. And I've actually found that my Nokia, with heavy use, can last somewhere in the range of seven to nine hours without recharging. Pretty cool. Over here on the left, we have your basic applications menu. We'll get into that more later. And finally, your working screen, although it's worth noting, once you pull up an application, you can actually maximize it to the full size of the display. You can also see that I have a number of applications loaded and displayed on the desktop. Google search, a clock, an internet radio, a broadcast radio, and a web link to the operating system 2008. These are options defined by each user. Let's take another look at the actual device. Now you have some buttons here on the left. These are nice because when you're browsing the web they allow you to scroll up, scroll to the side, and select, and some other things as well. Next, you see this little circle here. Well that's a pop-out camera you can use for internet calls or to actually take regular pictures. And finally, although you can't see them here, your on-off switch and some expansion buttons. And by expansion, I mean you can increase the size of the display, the magnification, and an embedded microphone and speakers. Exploring the first menu item, we have our miscellaneous applications. I'm not going to fire them all up, but I did mention the camera, and I thought you might be interested to see a picture taken by the camera. The other ones, you have contacts, images, calculators, sort of the normal applications you expect on a small device like this. Okay, here's a photo taken from the Nokia of yours truly, the North Star Nerd. You can see it's pretty grainy, and this was taken at a distance of about 10 yards. But if you want to take a photograph and send it via the web, or the camera actually works with web phones, it is built into the application, and the application has a built-in microphone as well. Continuing down the Applications menu, we have our Web menu, and that's where the Nokia shines. It is an Internet tablet. And the first one we're going to explore is Email. So let's take a look. And then after Email, we'll look at Skype. Here's a screenshot of my Comcast email. Using the Nokia, I can actually compose email offline and then just briefly come online to send and receive content. And also, remember that Bluetooth keyboard? Well, I can do it with a full-size keyboard. Now, if you haven't tried out Skype, this is another area where the Nokia is fantastic. 15 minutes after I opened my box, I actually used Skype to call my wife downstairs in our home. Now, that may not seem very impressive, but if you were overseas and using a Wi-Fi, the built-in microphone, we got a really clear connection and it was very easy to understand me and you could save a lot of money. So anytime you've got a Wi-Fi, you've got a phone. Most folks like to know what's under the hood, the settings. Now I haven't mentioned up to this stage, but the Nokia is based upon Linux and open source. So we have the basics here, but if you really were a geeky nerd, you can really expand this area. And the only one we're really going to look at today is the control panel. Here we're looking at a screenshot of the control panel and you can see there's a lot of different things that I can pull up and edit 
the configurations of. We're not going to go into them right now, but I just wanted you to see some of them. Moving on to utilities, it's worth noting that Nokia has some nice ones, and you can read them here. I'm not going to spend much time on these. Now, although I pulled up email via the Applications menu, the Nokia actually has a special communications email specifically for email, contacts, internet call. And so it does serve a lot of the PDA-like kinds of things. Where would we be without the World Wide Web, specifically browsing to web pages? Well, the Nokia N800 recognizes that and once again has a special menu to help you get out to your favorite websites. And browsing works pretty well, so let's take a look at a page. Here you have a screenshot from the Nokia of Google News. Now I find with the magnification screens, and this is at 120%, I can basically scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, scroll right, and I've been pleasantly surprised how easy it is to read websites. Once again, the resolution is around 800 by 400. And remember, most cell phones these days have Bluetooth, and thus, if Wi-Fi is not available, you still can get online. Well, thanks much. I hope you've enjoyed this short tour of the Nokia N800. Yes, it is a nerd's toy, but for somebody on the go who wants to stay connected and use something like a Bluetooth keyboard for full-sized input, it really works quite well. Goodbye.